Hello everyone, it is so nice to finally get to my final video discussing a total drama season, though I'm sure I'll get to the Redonkulous race eventually. When I saw Pakatu Island and the cast, I did feel very weirdly about them, and they seemed a lot more like caricatures, even compared to the second cast, but not in a good way, or good caricatures, especially since the people are still supposed to be grounded in reality regarding them being normal teenagers that you would see in everyday life. I don't get why it's called season 5B, when in all purposes, it is a separate season and something completely separate from All Stars, and they have absolutely no connection towards one another. Apparently, the studio wanted to have two seasons be branded as one, since they were working on both at the same time and they were greenlit at the same times, and for other confusing reasons. Anyways, I watched the season at the time it was airing, and I didn't like it as much as most of the other seasons, but it was better than All Stars. It was nice to see a new cast and a new setting after two seasons of being back in Wamanakwa, especially with it being on a robotic island. But there were even less dynamics than Revenge of the Island, which I thought was an issue in that season, and everyone is just too cartoony to the point where you don't relate to them and you don't like them. Most of them have one gag throughout the entire season and speak to the same one to two people for their entire run, so everyone feels alienated and isolated in a weird way. The humor is also pretty childish to the point that it makes you cringe. So, uh, this is my team. What's a lackluster premiere episode? And it's easily my least favorite of them all. I did find the episode even more rushed than the last two introduction episodes, since all of them included an elimination within them, and I found those two to be relatively rushed as well. I did like the first few minutes, where we had quick little glimpses of everyone's personalities, but they then rush right to the challenge and you don't even have enough time to soak anything in. It also doesn't help that most of the characters are flat out irritating. I only liked Jasmine, Sky, and Sugar, while thinking Scarlet, Ella, and David were okay. I found everyone else annoying at best, or heinous at worst. Beardo is given the boot here, and is the current generation's version of the silent father character, but he was easily the most annoying one compared to Justin and B, since he did speak. All he did was make a bunch of obnoxious noises that got old very quickly. He mentions as he's being eliminated that he just wanted to get to know people. Maybe if they focused on that, he would have been a decent character. I Love You, Grease Pig was definitely a better episode in comparison to the first episode, and I think it's because some of the dynamics were already starting to form amongst the cast, and things weren't so blatantly rushed. I also think the challenge is a lot better in comparison to the last. Amy, Max, Leonard, and Ronnie continue to suck. Topher's zings and performance was enjoyable to me here. I liked Scarlet, Sky, Dave, Sammy, Jasmine, Sugar, Ella, and Sean here. It's one of the very few times where I enjoy most of the cast throughout the season. Leonard is sent home here, and I found him to be so unbearable. Nothing about his stick of believing that he's a LARPer was ever funny, and he actively lost the challenge for his team in both episodes. He lasted an episode too long, and I just cringed whenever he was on screen. Clearly, that was the point of his character, but there's usually supposed to be some humor behind it, and there was none with him. He was also one of the most blatant examples of how far they went with grounding their characters in realistic teenage stereotypes. Twinning isn't everything. It's a pretty good episode, but not one of my favorites. I really liked the challenge where everyone else has to throw balloons at one another, and it's a combination of the dodgeball and paintball challenges from the first season. I found a lot of the people to either be forgettable or neutral in the episode, as many of them simply weren't active here, like Ella... Sugar, who annoyed me with her abuse of Ella, Topher, Dave, and Sky, where I grew tired of their interactions. Amy and Ronnie were wretched, darling. I liked Max and Scarlet coming up with schemes that would cause the hunters to have the balloons explode on them. I found Jasmine and Sean's relationship to be cute, and I liked Sammy standing up to Amy after becoming friends with Jasmine. Amy is given the boot here, and I'm relatively mixed on it, despite not liking her at all. In general, I hate her character, but this story is not one that should have ended as soon as it did, and they gave such a shallow reason for the feud, to the point where it's just abusive and not interesting whatsoever. 
They didn't even add a bit of complexity to her, so you just hate her instead of loving to hate her or at least somewhat understanding her. Also, she ended up leaving due to being poisoned and Simi pretending to be her, which doesn't have as strong of an impact in my opinion as Amy outright screwing up, causing her to be eliminated, if that makes sense. I love you, I love you not was kind of enjoyable, but a bit too sadistic at the same time. It was all over the place, since I liked the challenge and the idea of it, but they kind of do go far with it too much and I see it as missed potential as well, since they actually could have used this challenge for us to get to know the cast better. I felt the same way about the second episode of Revenge on the Island. Anyways, Ronnie is worse than ever in this episode, Sugar really becomes unbearable with her abusiveness, Max and Scarlet were non-factors here, Topher and Sammy were kinda eh with their stories. I felt really bad for what Ella was going through and I actually enjoyed the couples Dave and Sky, as well as Sean and Jasmine throughout the episode. Ronnie got booted in the episode and he used another prime example of having a very singular gag that got old just as soon as it started, much less it lasting four episodes. Him having a crush on every girl possible could have been somewhat interesting and had they delved into why he was like this, but of course they never do it, so you don't even care and you're just more annoyed with him. He's just another example of how far the humor fell in the show and he was too separated from the other contestants in my opinion. The fourth consecutive character that was eliminated that I absolutely hated. So I would be lying if I said that I enjoyed a blast from the past because I really did not. The challenge was kind of boring in my opinion and they just run to get to baton sticks and then run back to the station. I found Scarlet showing her more evil side and kicking butt in the challenge to be fun, and I remembered liking and enjoying Sky for some reason here too. Topher was alright in the episode, with how he made Chris get Botox due to ageism, and I didn't mind Sky or Dave throughout the episode. Sean's zombie stick got really ridiculous in the episode, to the point where he hides from most of the episode in order to avoid a zombie apocalypse, and Jasmine ends up getting mad at him because he decides to do the challenge, and then kind of is... Overall, nonchalant towards Sammy's mess towards the episode. Sugar is truly starting to get more gross and irritating throughout the episode and at this point in the season. And she's supposed to be funny, but it always fails, especially around this point. Max is not funny, or at least most of an impression in this episode. And Sammy was just blech overall here. Sammy is voted off here after her sister shows back up for revenge and them fighting causes them to lose the challenge. I realize with this last rewatch that I like the idea of Simi, the more meek twin speaking up, defending herself, and becoming her own person, but that never actually ends up happening here. Because she booted Amy in the way she did, she has to pretend to be Amy, and is not able to be her own character, much less grow to be her own character, and she's eliminated because her sister comes back. Everything about it is just so poorly handled and cut off way too early. From what we got, she was alright but there has to be more to her than just being Amy's nicer sister. Mo Monkey, Mo Problems is another less than stellar episode, and I think for me, it's mainly because the challenge sucks. They're literally just walking around and they have to find some coin to put in a vending machine that's surrounded by monkeys or is in a monkey in some cases, which is just very boring to watch in my opinion. Shika is at her ultimate worst with her harassment, which doesn't even lead up to an interesting conflict or Ella defending herself, and then she becomes beyond gross like Owen with her antics in this episode. Max is at his all-time worst with his obsession with being evil, being completely useless, and is just more grating than humorous, which he really was humorous in the first place. Topher somehow gets a hold of Chris's phone, I think it's in this episode, and I really don't care to find out if it's in this episode or another episode, and his obsession with Chris got really old at this point. Jasmine still being really mad at Sean was uncomfortable to watch actually. Dave blowing Ella off for Sky could have been interesting and leads to something more interesting, but like many things in Pakatu Island, they don't commit to it. And Sky is happy that Dave likes her, and I'm back to being very bored of them. Scarlet wants to get revenge on Max and reading him every chance she could was just so relatable to me, and I found Sean and Ella to be quite enjoyable within the episode. Ella is eliminated here because Sugar decides to write a note, and I was shocked that I ended up liking Ella since I was expecting to dislike her a lot. 
She has a great farewell with her song, but it would have been nice if she learned to stand up for herself, or it's just a bit more realistic, as being an obsessed Disney princess cosplayer, as she's a teenager, it's just not realistic at all. There was a chance for there to be a story for her, but they never did anything with it. Despite being a Disney princess spoof, which is weird, even for teens, she was solid. For an episode that is completely useless, This is the Pits is a very enjoyable episode. I think it's because people are paired up with others that they usually don't spend a lot of time with, and they are all underground, and I like those types of challenges, as they have to find their own ways out, and we get a different sense of scenery. Jasmine was actually endearing because of her claustrophobia and dealing with Topher in the episode, when the latter finally has to interact with someone who isn't Chris. Scarlet is slowly finding out that the island is fake and her growing irritation with Max is great while Max continues to suck more and more. I liked Sean in the episode, got tired of Dave and Skye's nauseating growing infatuation throughout the episode, and I think Sugar might be at her most gross in this episode throughout the entire season, and I just wanted her to screw off somewhere else. No one wins the challenge, and it's clear that the episode is just designed for filler, as no one goes home, and nothing that happens in this episode affects anything that happens afterwards. Three Zones and a Baby is an okay episode, though I found it interesting that they didn't merge here, but they did this time in All Stars, where there are eight people left and in the eighth episode. Anyways, I found the challenge to be relatively solid, though Sky and Max swapping teams in the last pre-merge episode was kind of pointless. I guess it was done to make Jasmine turn Sky against Dave and to develop both of the storylines, but they should have done it earlier and I felt like it would have happened anyways, even if they didn't swap. Now that I think about it, and I'm talking about it, Jasmine is absolutely horrible in the episode. Comes off like a lunatic, borderline, and the fact that it her anger is dragged out for so long just makes it a more unpleasant viewing experience, and it dims down Sky as a character within the episode as well. Dave is also horrible with refusing to listen to Sky and becoming more and more of a whining baby. Topher and his stupid plot with trying to take over the show actively made the episode so much worse because it really was a nonsense plot that was going nowhere immediately. Max liking babies made him charming and likable throughout the episode. Sugar liking Max's new attitude and was just generally a lot more snarky and pleasant in this episode was a refreshing change. And I liked seeing Scarlet get really, really mad at Topher. Sean is doing everything he can to make up with Jasmine, and you just feel really bad for him. Topher is finally sent home in this episode, and he could have went home in episode 4 or around there. He literally interacts with no one on the cast, and if you remove him from the season and episodes, absolutely nothing changes, which is a problem, since it makes him even more isolated than the others, and this is a problem for most of the cast, but with him it's just extreme. Also, his entire character and story being around elevating the host, who is supposed to be isolated from the cast, is a problem, especially with Topher being a clone of Chris in some ways. Despite that, he could be enjoyable and have some great lines, but it was more rare than not, meaning that he's more useless and meh than anything else. Her and Go Seek is absolutely awful. There's absolutely no other way around that fact which can make me see it in a nice or a pleasant way. David is horrendous, and so many people broke it down better as to why. He refused to listen to Skye, and then when she had to be hard with how she broke it down about her never dating him, he not only sucked and howled when he was rejected harshly after episodes of her turning him down, but then he acted like a jockey a-hole, thinking that it was a better way to get to her only to demand that he gets voted off, since he doesn't care about anything else when all else failed. But you don't really feel bad for Sky like you're supposed to, and you're tired of the both of them. It is even worse because she takes Jasmine's crappy advice even further. Jasmine is still upset about what happened four episodes ago. That was just a dumb reason to be upset over in the first place, and while she and Chan forgive one another, I just don't care by this point. Max and Scarlett were non-factors in the episode, where Sean and shockingly Sugar were the only enjoyable people in the episode. Dave is eliminated, or outright quits here, and I was grateful for it. 
He was enjoyable for the first few episodes, and it was clear that they wanted to show that the quote-unquote normal guy is not so normal. And while they did it better than they did with Trent, some of the low stakes had during the season and will continue to go down in the finale just makes him awful. There is no love to hate with Dave. He was just lame overall. And this sucks because I actually liked him in the first few episodes. Scarlet Fever is another episode that I don't like at all. The island goes out of control and Chris decides to ditch them all to the point where the challenge eventually becomes to shut down the fake island and then to eventually stop Scarlet. It was just very lame and how the elimination was handled was even worse. Jasmine and Sean are the only likable people in that episode and it was nice to see them reunited and wanting to work together throughout the episode. Scarlet decides to turn it up into a 1950s Saturday morning cartoon villain where we knew she was evil, being so over the top about it to the point where she wants to kill everybody and destroy the land just for lulls, I guess. And it ruined what was otherwise a solid character beforehand. And Max continued to suck in this episode where I didn't even feel bad that Chris disqualified him for technically no reason. I didn't care for Sky or Sugar in the episode, but I think this was when they started interacting a bit more, which was something, I guess. Scarlet was someone I consistently enjoyed throughout the season, as I found her to be sneaky and she was a bad bish when she wanted to be. I liked her annoyance with Max and slowly revealing herself to be evil, but when the reveal came, it was just too much and almost proved how unintelligent she was since if she just remained cool and been slightly evil, she would have won and would have been able to do a lot more damage, and we would have actually had a compelling, interesting villain. She also suffered from only and mainly interacting with Max, where she would have been more interesting had she interacted with others, and just from the little we see of her interacting with others, it only strengthens my case. Max sucked from the very beginning to the very end, with a few exceptions. I know a lot of people like him, but he's a prime example of how the show ran out of ideas with teen stereotypes and had to resort to crud like this. It is even worse because he was eliminated fair and square in episode 6, and then they decided to break him around three quarters throughout the season, where he mainly just interacted with Scarlet and was just a useless nuisance throughout the entire season. At least all the other grading fodder were booted immediately, but he was a few who ended up sadly escaping that fate. Skyfall was a very meh, alright episode in my opinion. The challenge consisted of the final four making it to the top of some mountain trail of some sorts, where Sean and Jasmine agree to work together so they can split the money together, which Sean is not as high on compared to Jasmine, and we see Sky and Sugar team up because they know they have to work together in order to defeat the power couple. The two of them have different morals, and Sugar ends up turning on Sky. No one bothered or irritated me throughout the episode, and everyone was tolerable at worst to likable at best. Jasmine and Sean were definitely the more interesting and likable ones out of the bunch, and I liked the idea of Sugar and Sky being enemies, but it should have been built up sooner in the season. Jasmine gets eliminated in the episode, and I really like her and how rootable and normal she is, without having little to no personality which tends to be a thing on Total Drama. I liked her relationship with Sean for the most part and how she interacted with the others, while also being tough and strong. That stretch in the middle made me very uncomfortable, and I wish they gave her a better and an actual solid reason to be mad at Sean for all this time than the reason that she was given, since it really throws off her likability in a bad way. Either way, she's still one of the best, if not the best person in the season, for sure, in my opinion. I thoroughly enjoyed Pocked with Talent, and it was a long time where I've enjoyed an episode in the season like I enjoyed this one. Of course, the challenge involves them creating their own challenge for the three of them to do based off their three talents, and I thought it was pretty unique. Sky and Sugar bouncing off one another was great to watch, and while Sean is decent in the episode, he does seem isolated, and it's almost like they breezed through him so he could get to the finale without doing much that caught your eyes of the episode. It was a light episode, but nothing too dramatic or ridiculous, which was something that was definitely needed at this point in the season. And I did get a lot of entertainment out of it. Sugar goes home here, and I have such mixed opinions on her. There are a few episodes where I do enjoy her presence, but then there are so many episodes, 
especially from a long middle portion of the season where I outright hate her and think she's the worst thing or one of the worst things in the franchise. I only really like her in the first few episodes and her last few episodes. It was also confusing since they made her Owen types of comic relief, but they then wanted us to see her as a serious threat as a villain, so that was confusing to deal with. I'm very mixed on her and have very polarizing thoughts on her, so she does a lot of things positive and negatively that affect the season. The finale episode, Lies, Cries, and One Big Prize, is easily the worst finale in the series ever, and that says a lot, especially after the All-Stars finale. Yet again, it's another season where the entire cast doesn't return for the finale, so the closure and the feel-goodness of that is non-existent here. But there's even less people who return compared to last season, where only Jasmine and Dave return, making it clear that these two couples were the only ones that really matter and the only things that really mattered this season. Of course, Chris stirs up some drama by showing half of Sky's audition tape where she admits that she has a boyfriend. Dave freaks out and goes crazy like a madman to the point where he wants to harm Sky, but Sky also screwed up because despite telling him no early in the season, she kisses him in the finale to cause him to perform better in the challenge. And then they try to stir up some drama about Sean admitting that Jasmine's idea with the splitting of the money and what she would do with it is stupid and he doesn't want to split it, which is just stupid contrived drama anyways that really really bored me. Either way, the episode does not leave you with a good feeling whatsoever, and I feel like the actual win, depending on whether it's Sean or Sky, was very rushed in the episode, and then they decide to leave David behind. Sky is one of the normal people in the season, and it instantly made her a lot more likable and easier to get into compared to most of the cast. I like that they actually gave her inherent flaws that are acknowledged, so she is not a Mary Sue. At the same time, she's not the most interesting person, and I found myself yawning throughout several of the episodes this season that involved her. She does have her charm at times, and I'm definitely on her side more than Dave, but she does not come off as the most likable person. Overall, I am kind of neutral and kind of mixed on her, but that's still better than how I feel about most of the cast. Sean is someone that is more normal, despite having a huge zombie apocalypse obsession that got old pretty quickly. But I think he stood out in a good way more, because that was not all that he was, and he was shown to be very interpersonal and also very skilled throughout the season, while having solid interactions with other people throughout the season. At the same time, it is weird seeing someone win or get to the finale, and they don't even acknowledge the fact that they are playing a game for most of it. So it's kind of like they just kind of pushed him along just so he could be there, without being a bit too active with the actual strategy part of the game, and the competitive part as well. So, this season was not as bad of an ending to the series that All Stars would have been, but it's still a weak way to end the series on, in my opinion. The cast was the worst than it has ever been, and no one interacted with one another, which made everything seem so hollow. Revenge of the Islands cast was still grounded in reality, so despite having a similar format, you got into that cast and that season a lot more than this one. It's just sad seeing how much the show had fallen by this point, and how much it deviated from its original premise, as well as how the season ended didn't help whatsoever. It just seemed like there were very little ideas by the time the season was in production, and it happened, and everyone involved was just fatigued, from the writers, to the producers, to the fan base, so on and so forth. It's funny because when I did this rewatch, which was in January or February of this year, the show was not renewed yet, so I saw this opportunity as a sense of closure for me, but with it being renewed, there is a sense of hope that I have now that I didn't have. There clearly needed to be a break from the higher ups and the audience changing from when these seasons aired to the current day, so a reboot to start fresh is definitely needed, especially after the season, and I'm looking forward to see what happens. Thank you all for following me on my journey, and here are my rankings of the characters and the episodes of the season. I will cover the Redonkulous Race eventually, since it is a spin-off, and then I will rank the seasons, and then rank all the contestants.